Get your Big East headlines here. Today, we got the top dogs in the land. Number one, UConn. Yeah, they're big and they're bad, and they're looking to do big things in the Big Apple and in the Big Dance. Check out the Husky hype as they take on the defending champion, Syracuse Orange, right here, right now. Like this crowded concrete island, the Big East is densely populated. And it only got better when it got bigger. Let's go! They gather here to separate, to step up, to shine through, to stand out. The vote is unanimous for UConn, ranked number one and favored here. They must contend with the Orange and their miracle man. They want to write it on the wall, pound it out on their chest. In the bigger Big East, we're the best. This is 10% luck, 20% skill. Welcome everyone to New York City in the world's most famous arena, Madison Square Garden. It's day two of the Big East Championship. We have four quarterfinal round games to come your way today. And we tip it off with the number one team in the country. The Connecticut Huskies are in the garden to take on their arch rivals, the Syracuse Orange. Syracuse at 20 and 11, Connecticut 27 and 2, matching their school record for regular season victories. Connecticut had yesterday off as the number one seed. Syracuse in the 8-9 game eliminated Cincinnati in a thriller. Jerry McNamara, the buzzer beater, with his team down by two, the three from the top of the key. Syracuse prevails 74-73 over Andy Kennedy's UC Bearcats. Later this afternoon, Marquette swings into action in its first ever Big East tournament game against Georgetown. And tonight, Villanova takes on Rutgers, West Virginia, battles its arch rival Pittsburgh. Good afternoon everybody and welcome back to the Big East Championship presented by Aeropostal. I'm Sean McDonough along with Jay Billis and Bill Raftery. Delighted to have you with us. This is a marquee matchup. They've been two of the very best programs in the Big East in the nation throughout the years, recent years. Sixth meeting, Jay, in the last two years. They're very familiar with each other and another big game for the Orange. It's a huge game for the Orange. Two big questions. Will UConn win it all? And will Syracuse make it into the NCAA tournament? I think they will. A lot of people think they have to win today in order to make it. If they win today, that should seal the deal. Syracuse kept its tournament hopes alive, certainly with that win yesterday. Many believe a win today against the number one team would cement their entry into the field of 65 but Bill a big challenge they played twice in the regular season Connecticut won relatively easily each time they led by 20 points or more in both games. Well for Mr. Warmth it's the two three zone Jim Beheim. they have to play good defense yesterday against Georgetown the middle was open Connecticut is a great interior passing team it's essential that they get back and guard well and as we take a look at Star Watch this afternoon we'll get a look at the best player for the Huskies leading the number one team in the land Rudy Gay he does it all maybe the most talented and the most versatile player in America he is really starting to play with the aggressiveness that makes a star and for Syracuse Jerry McNamara who says he's underrated at 17 points nine assists and three steals against Cincinnati hitting the game winner and Jerry's got to have a big game uh, they guard him extremely well I think he's got to get 25 points and be terrific in the field goal percentage shooting area traditionally he has not fared well against the Yukon Huskies Let's take a look at the rest of the starting lineups for Syracuse Jerry McNamara and the freshman Eric Devendorf in the backcourt with the front line of Terrence Roberts, Daryl Watkins, and Demetrius Nichols. They'll be challenged by that enormous front line of UConn. Rudy Gay with Hilton Armstrong, the defensive player of the year in the Big East, and Josh Boone, who was last year's defensive player of the year. And in the backcourt, one of the best assist men in the country, Marcus Williams and Denham Brown, who had a very strong end to his senior regular season. Today's game is available in high definition on ESPN HD presented by Dish Network. Syracuse in the orange. 
Connecticut in white. Jim Burr, Ed Corbett, Mike Stevens, the officials. They'll be challenged with these two coaches patrolling the sidelines this afternoon. And Rudy Gay controlled the tip for UConn. Sean and Jay, unfortunately, 2-3 zoned by Syracuse with some man-to-man -man principle to go right inside quickly. And Hilton Armstrong lost control. Devendorf the run out. And Syracuse is first on the board. Boy, just the kind of start Syracuse needed. Not only getting a stop, but an easy score to give them a little bit of confidence. It's been hard for them to stick in it early with UConn. And they're doing a nice job going baseline to the high guy. Marcus Williams a miss. And Terrence Roberts the rebound. McNamara the look away pass to Demetrius Nichols. He's fouled and a chance for a 5 nothing lead for the Orange. How about drawing this start up, huh? All set up by good zone defense. A little more activity. We saw it yesterday. It's promising on the defensive end early for Syracuse. But, Bill, don't you think you have to run with this team to try to go against a defense that isn't set more often? Absolutely, because of the interior aggressiveness and shot blocking ability, Sean, as you take a look at Jim Beheim, Hall of Famer. Win today would give him 21 wins for the 28th time in his 30 seasons at Syracuse, trying to get into the NCAA tournament for the 25th time in 30 years. And a couple times they didn't make it, they were right on the bubble. Rudy Gay for three. And the rebound controlled by Daryl Watkins. Nichols for three, long. And Gay tipped the rebound out to Brown. Williams lowered his shoulder and got called. Or rather, McNamara got called. Looked like Jim Burr was pointing offensive foul. But then changed. Jim Calhoun, like Jim Beheim, in the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame in Springfield, Massachusetts. They went in together last September. And Jim Calhoun made the point when we spoke with him this morning. Last year, Connecticut beat Syracuse twice in the regular season, but Syracuse won the game here in the Big East Championship in the semifinals, and the Orange went on to win the Big East Tournament title. He doesn't like playing this A team this many times. And he made a good point earlier about this 8 9 winner having to play that team at noon on the second day. You're playing a team that's NCAA tournament good. That's no longer. Uh, an easy game, quote unquote. Then he made the point they used to schedule this one versus eight or nine game, thinking it would be a route. And earlier in the league history, it typically was, but not anymore with the strength of these teams that are going to be finishing in the eight and nine spots, not only this year, but in all likelihood for years to come. And Syracuse competing on the glass, solid fashion, and also they got back to the gate of fast break. That's very important. They balance the floor. McNamara, the dump off to Nichols. It's seven nothing Syracuse nearly two minutes in. Hey, how about McNamara working as the two guard with Devendorf handling it out front. They're going to have to put a lot of pressure on Devendorf make it difficult for him if he's going to try to run the team. It's McNamara the hero yesterday with the buzzer beater to give them the win. Josh Boone misses and Nichols the rebound. And of course, McNamara, the subject of Jim Beheim's memorable post game comments, responding to articles in the Syracuse Post Standard and the Syracuse Campus Paper, The Daily Orange, quoting anonymous assistant coaches in the Big East saying that Jerry McNamara was overrated. Beheim vehemently disagreed. He said, All year long, he's carried us. He's double teamed all the time. He has to bring the ball up the court without. Jerry McNamara, this team wouldn't have won 10 games to clean up and paraphrase what Coach Beheim said. People, I'm glad you did clean it up. People have to understand it's all about the travel, four years, what he's meant to this program, and uh, he's endearing to coaches and fans alike up in that area, but uh, it's easy to take shots at a guy. He's had to do everything. The, the defensive plan of every school, including Jim Calhoun today, was to stop this guy, take him out of the game. They just don't have as many weapons as they did the past couple of years. But a no great Hakeem move. Warwick, no Craig Forth, no Josh Pace off that team of mm -hmm. a year ago. And a great move in this game to move him to the two guard early on to let him run off screens, to run Marcus Williams around, and not a very good foul in this situation by Williams to give this great free throw shooter three hacks at it from the line. Best free throw shooter in the history of the Big East. 91% this year. He made all three. And a shocking start to this one. Of course, when they met in the regular season up in Syracuse, it was Connecticut that jumped out to a 12-0 lead. Boone bumped 
And he'll go to the line. Try to get Connecticut on the board. Nearly three minutes in. Sean, I haven't seen UConn do one thing wrong on the offensive end except finish. They've had run, they've run nice sequences, put guys in the proper spot. Throw for six from the floor. Now Boone at the line. Not a good free throw shooter, 54 and a half percent. Averaging 10 points and seven rebounds per game. And a shot blocker as well. He is 63 in 29 games for the Huskies, who averaged nine and a half blocks as a team per game, number one in the country. Boy, and you almost think they ought to start measuring shot changes because the amount of shots they change is absolutely staggering. You know that all those shot blockers are there, and it changes your mindset. Connecticut going to the bench early. Craig Ostry, Jeff Adrian in the ball game, along with Rashad Anderson, who's usually instant offense off the bench. Here's Austria, starter for most of the year, a freshman. Now Gay, tough fadeaway, rebounded by Watkins. And you notice they got back against Syracuse. Terrific. The details, so important, you balance right. And they had Anderson wide open for a spot up three and missed him in favor of Rudy Gay's challenge jump shot. Robert sets a screen for McNamara. Now Devendorf trying to curl. 15 to shoot for the Orange. Watkins didn't get the bounce and then Nichols tip got wedged in the side of the rim <laughs> neck ball uh, possession arrow you don't see that that often you know you're not shooting well if you get neck balls Did you have a few in your career I had a lot of them that was actually a good shot for me did that happen Bill with the peach baskets when you played <laughs> it was tough getting the ball out when it wedged in though McNamara missed Nichols the rebound nice passing on the Walk. interior and Watkins called for the travel they did say that's what they do you mentioned the hurries the changes boy that illustrates how tough it is to score around the rim well, it's just that little bit of hesitation because you're worried about the shot block I mean that was a, a turnover that was caused by their shot blocking ability great pass Please. terrific catch but a little shot fake trying to get a shot blocker off his feet that's what caused that travel. Connecticut has not made a shot from the field. They've turned it over once. Nice Milton cut. Armstrong found the middle of that zone. He was fouled. And if that's on Watkins, it's two quick fouls, and they cannot afford foul trouble to Watkins and Roberts. They need to contend with that UConn size inside. It is on Watkins. ESPN's exclusive presentation of Championship Week is presented by 7-Up. If you want 100% natural lemon and lime flavors, the only way to go is up. And in part by OnStar by GM. To learn more, visit OnStar.com. Lunchtime in New York City. And a delicious treat to get this day of basketball started. Syracuse and Connecticut. The Orange by eight off the heels of their dramatic win over Cincinnati yesterday. It was a big win, but after the game, most of the talk around the building was about Jim Bayheim addressing the reports of some assistant coaches that Jerry McNamara is overrated. Without Jerry McNamara, we wouldn't have won 10 games this year. Okay? Not 10. These other guys just aren't ready. They needed him. Without him there, not 10. We wouldn't be here to even have a chance to play this game. And everybody's talking to me and writing about Jerry McNamara being overrated. Well, Jim Beheim, very passionate in his comments, and understandably so. This young man's had a tremendous career for Coach Beheim, and as we addressed earlier, he is the focus of every defense they faced this season. It's a, a situation, and Jay, you can relate to this with your relationship with Mike Krzyzewski. There's a bond that develops. Uh, you know, you've been through the wars, and he's carried the torch for you. And uh, to have somebody ridicule him when the opponent knows the strengths he has and you don't have any counters, it's a very difficult situation. Yeah, people are entitled to their opinions. That's all fine. But, but I think that, that when Jerry McNamara looks back on yesterday's press conference, He's probably going to feel better about what his coach said about him than anything else he said throughout his career. Mm -hmm. I mean, to have your coach stick up for you like that uh, is really, really meaningful. 
Milton Armstrong makes a pair. He's 69% from the line. McNamara needs eight points now to catch Sherman Douglas and move into the top five all time in Syracuse history and career points. McNamara being guarded by Denham Brown. That size and athleticism in an attempt to bother. A tough crossover. The and Orange turn it over. Trying to take Armstrong away from the rim and then put it on the deck. When Jim Beheim made the point, it was anonymous assistant coaches who were quoted in those Syracuse papers, but the head coaches named Jerry McNamara co Big East Player of the Year with Rudy Gay in the preseason, mm -hmm. and also named him on the first team all conference team at the end of this just concluded regular season. So they think he's they pretty know. good. They know. Rashad Anderson missed the elbow jumper. Roberts tipped it out. Watkins, Ooh, a foul call. Correct. They might score that a goaltend. Ed Corbett says no. I think they're wrong. I do too. That Mike Stevens called the foul underneath. Ed Corbett was the side official, and he immediately gestured to Jim Calhoun that this was still on the way up. No way. Wow. How about the elevation? Forget the call. We well, should point out one other thing too. The foul just before the last break was on Terrence Roberts. So both he and Watkins have one foul each. And that was the second on Roberts just now. Now Jay mentioned the size and that's been a problem for Jerry McNamara. The bigger guy can space and get the hand up and challenge the shot. And a lot of times late in the shot clock, he gets stuck with the ball trying to do some things for this team. Therefore, his field goal percentage occasionally may be down. And they're willing to take the risk that McNamara may be able to beat Brown off the dribble because if he does, he's got to go in there and finish over great size. Yeah, right there, that, that prevented him from going all the way. Matt Gorman into the game for Syracuse, number 24. Watkins to the right hand over Boone. Way too strong. Denham Brown the rebound. Wow. Boone off the pass from Denham Brown. Oh my goodness. Out of bounds, last touch by Syracuse. Can he run the floor? How that was that? incredible. Ooh. Not out of there like a bullet and the pass ahead. Boy, that puts a ton of pressure on your transition defense. <laughs> that ball might have gone out of bounds off of Josh Boone. That was incredible. Connecticut 0 for 8 from the floor but they scored six unanswered points all from the line they get back within four after falling behind 10 nothing Anderson's three blocked by Demetrius Nichols this post dives are hard to guard Watkins couldn't handle the pass from McNamara the third Syracuse turnover Later today here in the Big East Championship presented by Aeropostal Georgetown a winner yesterday over Notre Dame takes on Marquette Rutgers and Villanova and Pittsburgh and West Virginia Rutgers with the surprise yesterday as they upset their New Jersey rival the Seton Hall Pirates and the Pirates will have to sweat it out on selection Sunday on the bubble. Hey, Gary Waters of course his last game or games uh, coming up and a lot of emotion to look at the back screen here doesn't work. Well defended by the freshman Arinzi on a walker who's just come in for Syracuse as is Josh Wright with the ball now. Demetrius Nichols passed up an NBA three. Gorman the jump hook in the middle of the lane Syracuse has gone cold Armstrong the rebound. Well they're not shooting those jump hooks they're trying to loft him up even higher to get him over the shot blockers and they're not putting any touch on the ball. Three and a half minutes without a point for Syracuse McNamara rear breather and Eric Devendorf called for the foul his first and, and Sean he asked to come out and it's really a pretty good move because they'll get through the timeout the TV timeout giving him a blow these back to back games are very tough on a guy like him because he's always with the ball and doing some action. Syracuse played yesterday Connecticut had the bye as one of the top four seeds. You wonder though if early in the game as we saw today the team that played the day before has a little bit of an advantage it almost looked like it took Connecticut a few minutes to shake the rust and they haven't fully shaken it yet. Oh well, they're indecisive here on this call excuse me Sean. A blah okay. All three refs are waiting for somebody to make a call. I believe they gave it to Matt Gorman. Now Mike Stevens going back over to the table again. They held up four fingers. They don't have a number four on the floor. They maybe have a 34 the, and a 24. I thought maybe the two came earlier. 
It yeah. certainly wasn't Gorman. No, it wasn't. And I believe they might go to the monitor now to try to determine just who committed the foul. Bob Donato, the standby official there. Donato Walker. Yeah. A frenzy. You know, just that little move cost them. A, that, that's some weapon to have. A guy like Williams to beat the zone with the dribble. And they've been cutting well. He throws that little dribble move. Makes it very tough on the defense. Marcus Williams made the first. The foul on Anawaku. His first. And that's the first miss by UConn from the line. Now seven out of eight as a team. All seven points from the free throw line for Jim Calhoun's Huskies. A little flex screen and pop. Now, Gorman can give them some offense, particularly facing the basket, Jay. Right, a turnover. Wasn't on the same page with Nichols. Oh, Williams. Oh. Acrobatic lay in, nine straight points for Connecticut. And a timeout called by Syracuse. And they've gone more than four minutes without scoring a point. Back at Madison Square Garden, first of four quarterfinal games today at the Big East Championship presented by Aeropostal. Syracuse led 10-0, but it's the Huskies on a 9-0 run. The latest bug at that beauty by Marcus Williams, the junior from Los Angeles. And, and you know, Sean and Jay, he doesn't look athletic. He's got that little pudgy kind of a look, but he's explosive. He makes maneuvers like that. He really reads defense and beats you with the bounce. He's strong and crafty. And clearly, in my opinion, the best passer in college basketball today. And he's on the bench at the moment. Craig Ostry back in. Nice. McNamara to Roberts. They've been getting the ball inside. They just can't finish. That time, Watkins scored on a tip in, and the Syracuse drop. What a great trap. Sure is. Another one. Denham Brown did well to get out of the trap. Then McNamara tied up Austri, and Connecticut will keep it with 26 seconds to shoot. One thing Syracuse cannot afford to do is turn the ball over. You have a live ball turnover against UConn. They're going to take it the other way and score. And Syracuse had 22 turnovers in yesterday's ball game against Cincinnati. Yeah, Jim Beheim was disappointed when we spoke with him this morning, so he really should have won that game by 12 points or so. Handed it back to Cincinnati for a while in the second half. Rudy Gay, a high arcing three. And the rebound taken away by McNamara. Good pass. Nice look. Demetrius Woo. Nichols throws it down off the beautiful feed by McNamara. Overrated. Gorgeous delivery. The ability to pass ahead on the break is so underrated. You know who that reminded me of as Brown gets the open look? Bobby Hurley. Yep. Makes and Brown with his 21st three of the year. He shoots under 30% from beyond the arc. So the key to sticking with UConn, you've got to get baskets in transition. You cannot be afraid to run when you've got the opportunity. Beat that defense down the floor. McNamara and NBA three a little short rebounded by Hilton Armstrong from just up the road in Peekskill New York. Williams out of bounds last touch by Daryl Watkins. It will be Connecticut's ball with 27 to shoot when we come back. Offense hard to come by lately for the orange but that was a highlight and Syracuse leads by two. Connecticut just two for 12 from the floor, but within two of Syracuse, 11 and a half to go in the first half here at Madison Square Garden. Time now for today's ESPNU Pride of the Program segment. In the spotlight this afternoon, Texas Pan American. Head coach Bob Hoffman called it one of his biggest wins at Texas Pan Am. His Broncos zone defense stifled the Air Force offense as Texas Pan American rode the home crowd to the 37-35 upset victory. More pride of the programs are available on mobile ESPN. Syracuse by two. Demetrius Nichols has eight points. 
to lead the Orange. Right inside, Josh Boone couldn't finish. Denham Brown had it stripped by Devendorf and went right to Rashad Anderson. Well, that was way too easy, that duck in. By Boone yeah. into the middle off the out of bounds. Well, see, they played very flat in the back of the zone, and that's been open. Off the leg of Onowaku. Or check that off the leg of Watkins. Watkins, Roberts, Nichols, Devendorf, and McNamara, the starting five back in intact. Rashad Anderson missed a three. He's their second leading scorer, 13.3 per game, and he hasn't started a game all year. Leading scorer in the country among those who have not started a game. The Huskies have five players who average in double figures. Whew. Robert scores over the towering Boone. That's when you run the floor, you can get that great position and another terrific pass. Great anticipation, Sean. Roberts gave it up nicely to McNamara and back to Roberts for the dunk. Boy, did they look sharp. Activity leads to achievement. And this is an active Syracuse team today. Different outlook. Six assists already for McNamara. You might say he's an underrated passer. Syracuse came into the garden yesterday, losers of three straight. They look like a listless team warming up. You observe that, Jay. But sometimes a win, like they had yesterday in dramatic fashion, can ignite a team, turn their fortunes around. Just a lazy pass by Marcus Williams and an aggressive running of the court. And how about that pass by Jerry McNamara right on the money? William McCroskey into the game with the ball now for Syracuse. He gave it back to McNamara and now Nichols with Watkins and Roberts. Midway through the first half, the Orange with a six point lead. Nice slip. Watkins again in position to score and just cannot finish, struggling with that big front line. That time it was Josh Boone who blocked his shot. He just needs to take it right into the chest of these shot blockers. If you try to avoid a block shot, they're going to block it. But they space so well, though. They give you that cushion, Jay. It's tough. Watkins tried to tip in the McNamara floater that was a little bit short and could not. Adrian, a good catch, tried to bank it off Watkins. It went through his legs to Gay, who traveled. Okay, that's just terrific. McNamara stuck his hand in, started the problem. And then pretty good reaction of the D. McNamara goes out again. He has six assists and no turnovers. And three points. When McCroskey catches the ball against Anderson, he needs to drive it. Nichols with Gay defending. He gets the roll. A little hang time in the air from Demetrius Nichols, the junior from Boston out of St. Andrews in Rhode Island. Well, you need a middle game against Connecticut. Those pull-ups are there. You get too deep, you're really in danger. How about the length and extension of Demetrius Nichols when he pulls up? So high up in the air, you can't block it. In a game of runs, Syracuse led 10-0. UConn responded with nine unanswered. And now the Syracuse run again. Austria got the timeout. Wow. Great hustle to run it down and the presence of mind to call the timeout. With 8.56 to go, it'll be a 30 second timeout. So after Jim Beheim's words of support for Jerry McNamara, McNamara backing up the coach's words with an excellent performance so far today. Hey, Jay, it's like the old timer. He's a guard. Now you were mentioned he's playing off the ball, but he makes some terrific reads and soft, catchable passes. Just a gamer. I mean, a player that makes plays out on the floor. He can shoot it. He can handle it. He can pass it. The only thing that he doesn't do to the highest level is defend. But you can tell against UConn, Jerry McNamara has some problems against them because of, one, the weight and responsibility on his shoulders as carrying so much of the offense. But the, the, flip, the other side of that is the athleticism and size that you can put on him. You know, he's letting the game come to him, too. And feeling it out, not rushing things. And I like the way they're spacing this rest, Sean, too. He's already had a few stints on the bench, taking a breather. Marcus Williams with Rudy Gay, Nenham Brown, Josh Boone, and Jeff Adrian now for Jim Calhoun.
Tough pass. Brown bounced it past Adrian. That middle is open in this zone. Got to break somebody in there and have some poise. Get it in there, make a play. Josh Wright guarded by Marcus Williams. Both starting guards out of the game now for Syracuse. Devendorf getting a breather. Roberts took his eye off the ball. Adrian could not save it after he touched it. 19 to shoot for the Orange, and Hilton Armstrong is coming back in for the Huskies. Now for UConn, it's got to start on defense, though. They're going to get some open floor opportunities. They have been uh, failing at making the jump shots, and as Jay mentioned, the cut to the middle was active early. They've stopped it. UConn 27 and 2. In the regular season, they had two 11 game winning streaks. They come to New York riding a five game winning streak. The only losses at Marquette and at Villanova. Boone blocked Devendorf's shot. Roberts, nothing but net from about 16 feet. Boy, he's active too. Good sprint to the ball and nylon at the end. Six for Roberts. Nichols leads the Orange with nine. There, there it is. And Armstrong fell to the deck. Fouls on McCroskey. Yeah, that, sh that short First. corner, they try to get the ball and then the dive guy. Seventh team foul, a one and one when we come back. All right, Carl, thank you. Hilton Armstrong at the line for Connecticut down by 10. Rudy Gay and Rashad Anderson have not scored. They're combined 0 for 7. Josh Boone's 0 for 4. He has two points from the line. Connecticut 2 for 17. They've done almost all their damage from the free throw line. And Armstrong has made a pair. More rest time for McNamara alongside assistant coach Mike Hopkins. McCroskey playing in his hometown here in New York City. Devendorf took the handoff from Josh Wright and missed the three. Yay and Boone, the Brown rather, and that was last touch by Denham Brown. He tried to steal the call and didn't get it. There's something about older coaches getting teams prepared. A great example of Bayheim today, the weave. They do it once in a while, but going to it when uh, Jerry's out of the ball game has been very effective. Devendorf did get a good look, didn't convert it. Nichols the leading score. McNamara with six assists already. And McCroskey on the score sheet. He doesn't score much. Four points per game. That's his first bucket today. Benham Brown the UConn scoring leader so far. Trying to add to his total. Out of control. Watkins in the air for a timeout. Syracuse ball out of the timeout with a 10 point lead. Let's go inside the play. Well, we had mentioned, Jay, the weave earlier. Now they've got McNamara back on the floor, and they've been able to do a little bit of a, a curl. And just how they stay with this is terrific. Defense is lost, the slip to the goal. A lot of nice things happening on that play. Yeah, and Josh Boone a little bit worried about Watkins being there for the dump down. So he doesn't come over to try to block the shot. And I agree with that. I think that is Louis McCroskey's game to get to the rim when he puts the ball on the floor and attacks and plays like an athlete then he's a he's a good solid player when he tries to be a shooter that's when he has some issues because he's not a good shooter well he's not he's not a great shooter but guys get all caught up in their shot and hey Louis McCroskey's not alone they value their game by whether their shot is falling and you, you, you always try to tell your players don't be a shooter. Be a player. Make a play. You never know when you're going to get the opportunity to make a play. Don't value yourself just by whether your shot's falling. McNamara back in. Syracuse with a 10-point lead, and they've gotten some valuable minutes of rest time for McNamara. Roberts bumped on the drive. I think it may have been Brown, but the nice kickback McNamara had Armstrong on the wing. But why reach? Yo, why, defensively, yeah, defensively. Yeah, you've got a guy that, that doesn't handle it particularly well, a little bit out of control, mm -hmm. not going toward the goal, and you reach and bail him out. 
Two Syracuse runs with a 9-0 Connecticut run in between. The foul on Brown, his first, the third team foul against UConn. I, I love this here. They, do the, they were going to use the pick and roll. They run the stagger on the baseline. Krosky lost it. Brown and Anderson combined to force that turnover. And a three out of the corner. Denham Brown, the three ball, the senior from Toronto. Well, on the wings, they've got two great shooters in Anderson and Brown. This is the play I like, Jay. If they use the screen, they get the mismatch. McNamara, tough three, moving left. Watkins at inside position, but Armstrong just ripped it away from him. McNamara. Williams harassed on the dribble by Devendorf. McNamara really hurried that last shot. And slid too, Jake. Brown missed a three and then a foul on the rebounding action against Connecticut. It's on Rashad Anderson, his first in the team's fourth. The Big Ten tournament tips off in Indianapolis today. Action later on ESPN2 at 2 Eastern Michigan and Minnesota. And then at 4.30, the Michigan State Spartans take on Purdue. All part of Championship Week presented by 7-Up. Oh, got to catch it. Tough pass, but still, you're right. You got to trap it, and then they get beat the other way. Watkins blocked that shot. It still went down for Josh Boone. Boy, when your big guys don't catch the ball, guards tend to lose confidence. And you have one more threat taken away from your offense. And Syracuse has had a chance to pad the lead. Watkins has had a very difficult time just catching the ball on a number of occasions. He's hearing footsteps, too, I think. I think that's a big problem. Too quick. Even Doris three did not go. Anderson trying to make it a two point game. Long rebound, McNamara three on oh. two. Devendorf shoved in the back by Anderson. What a great pass again. Just terrific. With some heat, the dive, the angle to the middle. Give it to him, and he does. Well, anytime you take a quick three, you had better sprint back because Syracuse very much trying to take advantage of UConn in transition. If UConn's not sprinting back, Syracuse trying to get the easy opportunity. Talk about a great catch. That was a terrific catch by Devendorf. After the second foul and Rashad Anderson, 15 foul against Connecticut. Nichols, a deep three. He's having a day. Had a career day against Connecticut earlier this season. Had a career high 28 on January 16th in the Orange loss. Up at the Carrier Dome, 88-80. 25 of those points came in the second half. He is 12 in the first half today. And if you're UConn, why are you not getting a hand up there? You have carte blanche to get out. If you give up a drive, you've got shot blockers behind you. Right. You need to get out there and put pressure on that shot and make everybody a driver. Uh, you know, Jim Calhoun obviously distraught at the way they're playing, but the zone has taken the legs away, not alert here on the inbound. They've slowed the pace down by playing excellent zone defense. You kind of like to get it up and woo-woo. Shot -woo. Anderson, the bucket. He's playing with two fouls. Usually with Jim Calhoun, you get two fouls in the first half. You go to the bench, but Anderson stays in the ball game. Denham Brown nearly had the steal right in front of the UConn bench. Media timeout, 3.57 to go. Bayheim's Orange up by six after the timeout. We'll return back to the studio to get an update on the ACC tournament. All right, Carl, thank you. Former UConn assistant coach Carl Hobbs leading his George Washington team today. Connecticut the number one seed in this conference. Big East regular season coach champs with Villanova. They won the tiebreaker. Both the Huskies and Wildcats were 14 and two in the regular season in the Big East. Rudy Gay as we update the star watch has not scored. McNamara hasn't made a field goal either. All three of his points were from the line after he was fouled shooting a three. UConn going to have to start playing with a little more energy. Nichols fouled and they're going to give him three shots. He was rising to shoot. That's three, Brown huh? called for the foul. His second that would have been three on Anderson yeah. who was right there as well but they gave it to Denham Brown. As they should. Shook the reach in. 
But the, you're right, Jay, the emotion is lacking. I don't see a lot of vim and vigor. Well, you play at noon. You've got to create your own enthusiasm. You can't expect the crowd to get you into it. And Syracuse came into this game creating their own enthusiasm and buzz. Nichols missed the first. 68% for the year from the line. Jim Calhoun related a funny story we visited with him this morning. Of course, these two teams tend to bring as many fans to this tournament, if not more, than any of the other conference schools. Jim Calhoun said one of the Yukon folks was here yesterday, heard a couple of beer vendors talking. They were very disappointed that this was the noon game because it's going to draw a big crowd and then they'll leave. They won't stay around all day and continue to enjoy a beverage or two. It's not good for the vendors here when you have two marquee teams in the noon matchup. They oh. like the nine o'clock. Oh. oh! Wow. Well, he does have some hops and in the zone, you just don't isolate and check out properly or often. Well, weak side blockouts in a zone are crucial. First field goal for Gay. Oh. Great pass. Devendorf underneath to Roberts for the dunk and Terrence Roberts has eight. Boy, that was just whistled past the ear of Hilton Armstrong. That's a testimony to having vision on the ball and man. Got to see both. Good ball movement by the Huskies. Armstrong, strong brace line move, and then he was fouled by Daryl Watkins. Now, this may have been a play on uh, this particular dunk. Nobody boxing out the weak side rebound. And what a Look at pass. that. With the left hand, he has an amazing ability with either hand. Whew. On the money, Armstrong spinning around trying to get vision. That is not a good sound for a defender. The ball whistling <laughs> past your ear. <laughs> uh, just the thought of it. Armstrong, the free throw. It's a four point game with three minutes to go in the half. Connecticut 10 out of 11 from the line now. Watkins playing with two fouls, traveled. Yeah, they face guarded McNamara that trip totally isolating him don't let him get touches well if Watkins doesn't have a, a pass that leads him directly into his move you're better off not throwing it in there or he should kick it back out kick it back out Williams to Anderson they get playing from behind the entire half Devendorf just ripped it away from Armstrong Four on two break. Devendorf. Roberts up a little bit too early. That bounced twice on the rim. He was waiting for it to come off after the first bounce. Devendorf had McNamara on the other side as William takes it around. You've got to make the pass. And when you're playing the number one team in the country that has handled you relatively easily twice, those are the kinds of opportunities you need to finish. UConn back within two. Largest lead for Syracuse was 10. Gay caught behind Devendorf. Trying to catch up. Committed the foul. And that puts the Huskies over the limit. Coming up at halftime, the 7-up halftime report. Carl Ravitch and Doug Gottlieb, the latest on Barry Bonds. And bubble watch. How can you not be involved in that? If they're going to have bubble talk. Bubble boy has to be a part of the equation, doesn't he? You would think, but I'm not invited to that party. It's too high style for you. <laughs> you know, I, I saw McNamara talking to Diedendorf uh, before the free throw about missing him, but it was such a nice team oriented conversation. He slapped him on the backside, and that's what leadership's all about. Well, keeping him confident and keeping him in it because Eric Diedendorf has the chance to make. A play or plays that could determine the game. He made both free throws. He's an 82% free throw shooter on the Big East All Rookie Team this year. Nice. Armstrong out is out of bounds as he took the pass from Marcus Williams. Well, you've got to know where you court awareness. And it was a nice play too. Prepare yourself. The coach Beheim looked anguished even when the call went his way. Oh, he's way out of bounds. Way he is. He was, Stands he in the first the, row. He was with the vendor. The disappointed vendor. <laughs> about the schedule of games here today. Oh, they were placated. We told them the rapper nice would be cut. here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Make up for it. Another assist. Roberts, another bucket. Ten points for Roberts. Eight assists for McNamara. 
Every time it looks like Connecticut's poised to take the lead, Syracuse fends off the Huskies. And that's a very surprising number given Connecticut's ability to score in the paint. Syracuse plus 14. Thanks largely to the work of Roberts on those dunks inside. Well, the transition defense for UConn has got to improve in the second half. And another run out. Four on two. Will they finish this time? Devendorf jumped into a three. Nice job again by McNamara. My goodness, is he just playing within the game? Three. Qualities in a senior floor leader. Timeout, Connecticut. Jim Calhoun just staring blankly at his team as if to say, Does anybody want to run back? How about this? Give on a great cut to give uh, and Roberts. go. It still works. It does, believe in it. And how about that? If you don't put heat on that return pass, it may have been deflected. And by nearby Jersey City out of St. Anthony's Soren. I just love this give up, Jay. And don't you love to see the overrated players step up mm -hmm. and achieve? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, the but you're talking to Tom Moore, one of the UConn assistant associate head coach, one of the very fine coaches in the country. He'll be a head coach someday very soon. So all the assistants after Bayheim's tiger just have been walking around as if to say, wasn't me. I'm not the one who said he was overrated. <laughs> well, so you think there'll be a Freedom of Information Act request <laughs> to find cell phones to see who was calling the post standard? Well, I said to the coaches in the Connecticut locker room, what's the difference? Bayheim never talks to the assistant coaches anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> and Bayheim's team looking very much NCAA tournament worthy here this afternoon. One historical footnote in the history of the Big East, 27 years, only two teams that had 20 wins did not earn a bid to the NCAA tournament. Connecticut in 1980, Syracuse in 02. 100 of 102 teams that had 20 wins have been selected, and you can make the argument this league is better than it's ever been, so you would think if that's the standard, it would be even more pertinent today. There's well, no argument. It is better. It's really two leagues now. McGay all over Devendorf who managed to get it to McNamara. Roberts another dunk. Woo, a day sharp. Even a mishap turns attractive. Ten assists in the half for McNamara. The heave won't go for Williams. And Jim Bayheim fired up. Pumping his fist at his players as they came off. A very impressive half for Syracuse, which ends on a 9-0 run. At the break, the Orange 39, the Huskies 28. Here's the 7-up halftime report, Carl and Doug. Percent a surprising score at halftime as well here at the Big East Championship presented by Aeropostal. Syracuse finished the half on a 9 0 run. They lead by 11. Jerry McNamara, the hero yesterday, his three pointer at the buzzer gave Syracuse a one point win over Cincinnati to give them this chance to compete with the number one team in the country. And in the first half, after all of his heroics and the comments about him yesterday, doing it with the passing today. Just unbelievable. Ten assists by Jerry McNamara in the first half alone. In his last 60 minutes of basketball here in the Garden, 19 assists. Amazing. Ten assists. His career high is 12. He's done that four times. Three this year. The Big East tournament record for assists in a single game is 14. Done three times by three of the great assist men in the history of the conference. Brandon Knight for Pitt in 2002. Pearl Washington of Syracuse and Mark Jackson of St. John's in the same year, 1986. And so that's 11 assists. One of you two said he needed 25 points for them to win. He's had a hand. That was me, by the way. It was. Uh, <laughs> yes. But I believe his assists make up certainly for the points. He's really had great leadership qualities. And we're going to know in the first four minutes of this second half whether UConn's going to have the chops to come back and win this game. I mean, the first four minutes are going to be crucial to determining this outcome. They didn't come out until there were two minutes left before the beginning of the second half, so they were charred, I'm sure. 
13 point lead after the Watkins basket the biggest lead for Syracuse Williams brings it back to 10 with a three his first three of the day he has eight points high with Denham Brown now for UConn team high Demetrius Nichols with 13 Roberts with 12 leading Syracuse Calhoun on an over and back violation didn't get it and then it's turned over by Terrence Roberts Denham Brown for three rebound off to Boone batted out of his hands by Watkins and Devendorf and Connecticut plays it in with 33 to shoot Boy, Devendorf has very active hands really pursues the basketball Brown has it back from Boone and could not finish got an acrobatic shot up but did not score and then Hilton Armstrong the last to touch although he doesn't think so and they're going to change the call good piece of officiating Jim Calhoun got up of course and active yeah that hit Roberts on the yeah. head on the way out heads up play Williams off the mark Devendorf tapped it but Williams was the player there gay out of the corner for three Right that now. was a game of run in the first half. Syracuse started the game 10 nothing answered immediately by a 9 nothing Yukon run Syracuse followed that up with a 12 to 3 spurt. They exchanged buckets for a while and then the half ended on a 9 nothing Syracuse run Watkins count it and he'll go to the line and another assist for McNamara and he's applauding Watkins saying squeeze the basketball. Boy, great job with that pick and roll. They've gotten themselves deep in the lane. They've got open shots, open opportunities, dives to the rim, and just squeeze it. Well, squeeze. in order to squeeze it, you have to have your hands ready. And one of the problems with Daryl Watkins, he's got his hands down to his side on penetration. Those hands have to be presented so they can be ready to catch the ball. Makes the free throw. He's just 50.6% from the line. The lead back to 10. Two minutes played, second half. Syracuse trying to knock off the number one team in the country. A lot of teams on the bubble right now who have the pom poms out for the Yukon Huskies. You have to think a win for Syracuse today, and they're definitely in the NCAA tournament field. Boone, a couple of shots at it, missed the dunk on the second try. Armstrong tied up by Roberts. Oh. They got a T oh, on Armstrong, I believe. Yes, they do. That's the gesture from Ed Corbett. Oh, well, maybe let's see the point at Roberts, too. Well, Armstrong was fouled. That was not a held ball. That was a foul. Uh, Devendorf again, right in the mix, too. I mean, he helps he his is, post people. He's being fouled there. That was not possession of the ball. Foul. Jim Calhoun agrees with you. Hilton Armstrong has been assessed a technical foul. Jim Calhoun gesturing he's just swinging his arms trying to get the ball loose but I believe Ed Corbett thought that arm swinging was after the whistle had already blown. Well maybe it was but now this is just my judgment. If it doesn't hit anybody the guy's just trying to protect the ball and that call if you're going to call a held ball it needs to be a little bit quicker than that because he was being fouled. Well here's the dilemma also now. Point of interruption right. They were going to uh, shoot the technical. And then the possession arrow I believe takes place. Jerry McNamara walking toward the line at the other end. Ed Corbett who made the call was conferring for a while here with Jim Burr. And now Jim Burr has gone over to explain what is happening to Jim Calhoun. And Ed Corbett's talking to Jim Beheim. And Mike Stevens is talking to Williams out at half court. I think the question might be about who gets possession after this because right. it was ruled to held ball and Connecticut was due to get it. On the alternating possession, but the problem is a dead ball technical. Yes, that's right. And here's Jerry McNamara. Now four for four from the line, five for five. I think that almost seems extremely unfair. You know, first of all, as noted, the foul. The activity, and you're going to wrestle away. I didn't think it was vicious when he hit Deedon no, either. It's just a judgment call. Yeah. Those things happen quickly, and the referees were right on top of it to try to stop it. Now, 
clearly I thought it was a foul. I, I think in order to Kane, uh, when a guy's got possession of a rebound and you're reaching in there, mm -hmm. you've got to have possession of the ball for them to call uh, a jump ball. I, mean, I thought that was a foul. And even though the arrow pointed for Connecticut because of the technical possession went to Syracuse, now with a 12-point lead, that was a big sequence. McNamara's pass too hot to handle. Here's Williams off to Boone. And a blocking foul called underneath. Uh, boy, great play at the other end by Brown to dive down and get a hand on that pass. And once again, the challenge at the rim, Watkins gets nailed with it. And that's his third, so a concern for Syracuse in the opening moments of the second half. They are not deep, really, at any position, particularly among the bigs. Boone off balance as he launched that free throw. Arinzi on a waku. The freshman will come in for Watkins. Free throw blockouts become big plays when you have a less than average free throw shooter at the line. Well, every now and then he spins one up just like that. It looks like the form of a 90% free throw it's shooter. It's much more improved, no question about it. Mike Hopkins pepping up his guys over there. McNamara defended by Williams. Off to Devendorf. And the rebound, Williams. Got to get back. At the other end, a three by Gay and the rebound by Anawaku. Ahead for Nichols. Look at this open look. McNamara for three. What a nice play by Nichols, huh? All set up by a bad shot by Rudy Gay. A bad shot is the first pass to your opponent's fast break, and Gay led that break. Syracuse, very sharp. They limped into this tournament having lost three in a row, including a 39-point defeat at DePaul. How about this score today? And here it is Syracuse by 14. The largest deficit Connecticut has overcome this year to win was 14 against LSU in a home game at the Hartford Civic Center. Adam Brown with the ball with Marcus Williams, Rashad Anderson, Jeff Adrian, and Josh Boone for Jim Calhoun. Adam Brown inside the score. Yeah, great look. And he really makes himself available. He understands where the holes are, fills it beautifully. And you know after the timeout, Jim Calhoun talked to his team about going inside. They have been relying on the jump shot this entire game. Brown has 10 points. Now Adrian the steal. And Nichols tried to get it back. Out of bounds at our feet. We Thank got a little note. <laughs> we lost an index card, and Denham Brown was nice enough to give it back. We'll credit him with an assist. It says 0 for 7 on the index card. That must be Bill picking up the tab <laughs> since we've been in New York City. It's my favorite town. Timeout, 12 point game. An emotional head to head matchup between these two Hall of Fame coaches. One of the all time Syracuse greats trying to make sure he plays in one more NCAA tournament. And welcome back to the Big East Championship at Madison Square Garden, part of Championship Week. Syracuse by 12 here early in the second half. Sean McDonough, Jay Billis. And Bill Raftery, Jim Calhoun, as we said earlier, worried about this game, even though his team handled Syracuse with ease twice during the regular season. What's been different today for Syracuse to turn this around? I think the activity and enthusiasm they've been playing with defensively, it's led to some runouts for them and some transition, and transition really important against Utah. Put a motion together with McNamara having a flawless game. I believe he has two turnovers, the last one most recently, but he has just given the ball up properly, played totally within himself. Jeff Adrian scores from the side of the lane to get the Huskies back within 10. Of course, this is important for Connecticut. Tim Calhoun says it's nice to go into the NCAA tournament on a win by winning the Big East Championship. What happens in the tournament starting next week is obviously more important to the Huskies who seem certain to be a number one seed no matter what happens here in New York City. Here's Williams off the turnover. Brown missed the shot on the walk who altered it. 
And then Roberts commits the foul against Jeff Adrian, who's given them a little spark out of the timeout. Syracuse moved from 43 yesterday in the RPI to 38 today. And of course, their strength of schedule will be helped after playing the number one team today. That'll get better in the next computation. And it'll get a whole lot better if they happen to win this thing. And, Sy and Syracuse five and five in their last ten, mm -hmm. and they've played. This is their fifth game against a team ranked in the top three. Those five being Connecticut and Villanova. Now you take away the games they've played against those teams, and they're twenty and seven. Mm -hmm. Now I would invite just about any other team we're talking about on the bubble to add those games to their schedule and see if they would have done any do. better. And the committee says they're going to reward teams for playing difficult schedules. And Syracuse at number six. And when you talk about Florida State, Texas A&M, some of these other schools that people are saying are in, they played their schedules down the 80s, 90s. Right, I think there's a big trip right now. Watkins had his shot altered and could not finish. Boom, the rebound. The Husky fans starting to become engaged in the proceedings here under 15 to go. Williams. Foul. McNamara, a nice job of Williams getting it in the crack. They've been going inside, as noted earlier, but also the dribble drive, a great weapon against this zone. Second foul on McNamara, third team foul on Syracuse. Syracuse, the number nine seed, taking on top seeded Connecticut. Here at the Big East Championship, presented by Aero Postal, Sean McDonough, Jay Billis, Bill Raftery. Last year, number eight, West Virginia, ousted the number one seed in this round. Boston College sent packing by the Mountaineers as they made their nice run here in New York during a spot in the NCAA field that they took all the way to the Elite Eight. Roberts bump on a hip check by Williams as Terrence went up looking for a dunk. Well, McNamara has made great decisions all day long. Uh, Williams couldn't get squared up on this particular break, but anytime they've had the opportunity, Jay, blocks, loose balls, they're pushing it and getting open opportunities at the other end. A much more disciplined attack of the zone by UConn in the second half, but you can't fade away for shots against guys that have the ability to block shots. You got to go right into them, and that was an error in judgment by UConn, led to a run out to get Syracuse a little bit more breathing space. Roberts. Did not get the bounce. And it is a struggle all the time for Roberts from the line. Those are his first two free throws of the day. They could attack on this side on the short corner because Roberts comes all the way out on the wing here. McNamara and Devendorf on the Syracuse bench now. McNamara got three minutes of rest in the first half, played 17 minutes. Each of the five Syracuse starters played at least 17 minutes. The bench played just 12 minutes total for Coach Beheim. Of course, they played yesterday. Connecticut did not. Fourteen minutes to go. Syracuse by eight. Williams long with a three ball tipped out by Roberts and wound up with Hilton Armstrong. LaShawn Anderson missed a three. Adrian and Nichols jousting for the rebound. And it wound up in the hands of Josh Wright. Played a great defensive set that last trip. McCroskey and Wright now the backcourt. Roberts did not get the bounce. And the rebound to Armstrong. Once again, great balance. Rashad Anderson again, this time buries the three. Why leave your feet? Got everybody back, identified. One for eight from three-point range for Anderson, ordinarily one of the best sharpshooters in the country. Syracuse, another prolonged field goal drought. Watkins answers off the setup from Josh Wright. Somebody's got to pick up the ball earlier for Syracuse. Too easy to get it up the floor. Williams a lean in that didn't go. Anderson picked it up in the corner and drove to score. Connecticut back within five. And right now you can see they're not getting the loose balls, the rebounds, everything that went in the first half, they're not taking advantage of. 
Connecticut from 14 down back within five now timeout Syracuse the mini timeout with 12 39 remaining. This is the Rashad Anderson that was so dominant in 2004 the year that UConn won the national championship and on the other end the miss the long rebound and when it's long or loose Syracuse has to have it or they're going to see more of the same from UConn. Big East Championship continues as soon as we're finished with this one, about 25 minutes after the final buzzer. Georgetown and Marquette. They played once in the regular season in Milwaukee three weeks ago. Marquette won the ball game. Then tonight it's Rutgers against number two in the nation and the number two seed here, Villanova. And then at 9.30, the nightcap, Pittsburgh and West Virginia, both teams in the top 21 in the country. It's all today at the Big East Championship the quarterfinals presented by Aero Postal. John Thompson Jr. in his seat, ready to watch his son, Coach Georgetown. That's Daryl Gross to his left, our right, the athletic director at Syracuse. Probably has a few butterflies churning right now. Tough shot by Devendorf, just a heave that would not drop. Evendorf and McNamara back on the court with McCroskey. So a smaller lineup for Syracuse. Robertson Watkins. Armstrong went to the right hand. The scoop didn't go. Devendorf a push. Now, Devendorf on the floor. That zone's much better. Those long rebounds and very competitive after anything loose. But one of the few weak moves you'll see made by Hilton Armstrong. McNamara, the dunk by Roberts off the McNamara miss. 14 points to lead Syracuse for Terrence Roberts. Johnny took the big guys with his dribble, and that opens up the rim. Well, too many shot blockers. That, that's where a strength became a weakness. Everybody went to block the shot, opened up the offensive glass. Great pass. Marcus Williams underneath, and Hilton Armstrong will go to the line after a timeout. And on the other side of the commercial break, we'll check back in in the studio. Find out if George Washington is still in trouble in the A-10 tournament. Of course, in their last game, George Washington was in big trouble against Charlotte. It took a dumb play by Charlotte there, getting a technical in the final seconds to give GW a chance to pull that one out. You know, Sean, the uh, Cavs, you you take money out and pay the man after you. I know all week you have not. Jay and I picked up every cab. Yes, you have. That's nice of you. A trend I hope will continue <laughs> well in the next season. Uh, you're right, though, about GW. St. Joe's almost stole one. Hilton Armstrong, 7.6 rebounds. That's his first miss from the line. Now five out of six. UConn back in the game. They've been much better with the ball here in the second half. They had nine turnovers in the first half. They have not turned it over. In eight and a half minutes in this half. One out of two for Armstrong. A six point lead for Syracuse. Pressure in the backcourt. McCroskey looking for help. Got it from Watkins who handed it off to Josh Wright. Three guards in the game, but Diebendorf on the bench for Syracuse. Right went by Marcus Williams and a nice floater reminiscent of Sherman Douglas. I'll tell you Sean he beat the guy in the lane earlier. He's playing with some confidence an explosive step. That's the corner there. Now they, they exchange. They don't do a good job on offense. Horrible step pass. in by Watkins defending. McNamara oh. dumped it off. Roberts another dunk. 12 assists for McNamara. Matching his career high, fifth time he's done it. He's two away now from the single game Big East tournament record. Well, he stopped on a dime. Everybody kept moving in that direction. Unbelievable. He keeps letting this team down. Unbelievable maneuver. Armstrong, baseline jumper. Ten for Armstrong. Denham Brown also has ten for the Huskies. And fellas, where's Rudy Gay? He's coming in. I think. He's in the yeah, game, yeah. but he has been virtually invisible throughout the day. Very few touches. McNamara missed. 
It winds up in the hands of McCroskey with a new shot clock. You know, one of the things about Rudy Gay, if you're able to shut him down early and he doesn't get off to a good start, he is less aggressive throughout the game. And this is a tough match for him. You remember against Villanova, the little guards, he had trouble with staying up on them. Gay has taken only six shots in the game. Has made two. He has five points. What a catch. Watkins. Oh, boy. Oh. They wave off the bucket. Woo. Oh. Another one of those dribble drives that end up in a little ecstasy. The big guys are available. When they squeeze it, some good things happen for the Cuse. How about this? Well, Brown does have him in a bear hug around the yeah. waist as the pass is arriving. That's what Jim Burr saw. McNamara wanted the bucket. He knows every possession is key now more than midway through the second half. He's trying to pull off the upset. Foul on Brown, his third, and the team's fourth. Now Anderson with Brown out on McNamara. Josh Wright, sophomore from Utica, New York. McCroskey defended by Gay. Tough spot in the corner from McCroskey. Shot clock down to seven. Wright rises for three. What a major release. And the presence on the baseline to make a terrific delivery. But you can't give up the baseline like that. I mean, he had him trapped in the corner. And you've got to use the baseline as a defender. He let him have the baseline. Five big points in the last couple of moments for Josh Wright. Gay, a shot and a three. So there's Rudy Gay. When the Huskies really need him, they get him back with an eight. He has eight for the ball game. Averages 15 per game. Hearing eight and a half to go. Strong drive by McCroskey. His shot blocked out of bounds by Gay. Uh, the problem on this particular play that you alluded to, he, on the baseline, he went for the steal. That's what opened it up. And, of course, a great preparation, stepping into the jump shot. You never get on the high side of a man you're guarding on the baseline. If you give up baseline, you are giving up help, and you are giving up a three. Ten seconds to shoot for Syracuse. Wright took a look at the clock. They need to get moving toward the basket. And right through it, right into the hands of Armstrong. He tried to feed Watkins. 11 turnovers for the Orange. Huskies down eight. Nearing eight minutes to go. Armstrong, it rattles out to McCroskey, double teamed. And McNamara will leave it for Wright. Like the orange is trying to catch yeah. their breath at the moment. And but I think use some clock too, Sean. And spread them out. Get these big guys out on the floor a little bit. McCroskey count the basket and then the charge, says Jim Burr. Wow. You think they looked at the Villanova tape? Think about this. They being, they being Syracuse. Syracuse. Spread them as Jay alluded to. Put it on the deck as creative. Terrific offensive maneuvers. Krosky's foul is third. It's a 10-point game in a media timeout in New York City. ESPN's exclusive presentation of Championship Week is presented by 7-Up. If you want 100% natural lemon and lime flavors, the only way to go is up. And in part by Dodge. You can take life as it comes, or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge. Championship week presented by 7-Up continues from the world's most famous arena, Madison Square Garden. It's the Big East Championship presented by Aero Postal, the number one team in the country, and the number one seed in this tournament in trouble down by 10. They've trailed throughout. 7.42 to go. The largest lead for Syracuse was 14 here in the second half. But, gentlemen, one thing Syracuse has done very well today, every time Connecticut makes a little spurt, looks like they might take the lead or get even. Syracuse widens the margin back out. There's Gay to make it an eight-point game. And that's that open middle area. Yeah, they've responded beautifully. Here's a turnover in the backcourt. Look at this. That's good pressure. 
And then Williams fouled after the great effort by Rashad Anderson to win the ball back for the Huskies. Just a little bit of mental laziness on the part of Syracuse on the inbounds. A nice response by Anderson too. Very active. You think you're all alone. Those one-handed passes though you can't bring them back once you let it go. Alan Nichols his first and the sixth on the team so the next one will be the bonus. Williams made the first nine points for Marcus two out of three from the line. 15 out of 18 as a team. Syracuse 10 for 14 from the line. Down to a six point lead for Syracuse. Terrence Roberts leading the way and a lot of those 16 points on beautiful setups by Jerry McNamara who's had a career assist day. Same philosophy here. Back to the weave again up high. Down to seven minutes remaining. Eight to shoot. Josh Wright. Rebound to Roberts. New shot clock. Beheim says bring it out. And his charges listen to the words of wisdom. Well, when the bigs contribute, particularly Roberts, this is a different Syracuse team. The second opportunity gives them a chance to shorten the game a bit. McNamara for three. Wow, can he bite you? Well, we always talk about Anderson with daggers. Uh, this kid's providing a few for the Cuse. Lesson for all coaches out there, continue to recruit the overrated. <laughs> <laughs> Gay with 10, he's tied for the team lead in points with Armstrong and Brown. Williams for three. Wow. These two are gonna decide, I think. Williams on one end, McNamara on the other, which the outcome will be. Down to six minutes to go. The Syracuse have enough in the tank to finish off the upset. Nichols lost the handle. Gay ahead for Anderson. Beautifully off to Gay for the dunk. Timeout, Orange. This is the closest Connecticut has been in the second half. Mishandling in the open floor, no defensive balance. And Jimmy now a little bit irate, but this is what happens. Very clever dish off here at the end. Yeah, beautiful pass. And you know what, Bill? I don't think Jim Beheim's irate right now. I think what Jim Beheim is doing is telling a guy like Demetrius Nichols, you're good enough to do this. You're good enough to get this done. Just think about the play in front of you because all he needed to do was make the catch, corral the ball, and then make his move. That was a very sloppy turnover that led to the Connecticut bucket. We mentioned it earlier. They have come from 14 down to win this year. Did that in Hartford on January 7th against a good LSU team. And Sean, now the rotation begins again. Brown in to play McNamara. Anderson gets a blow. Fresh bodies. Jim Beheim has said one of the reasons McNamara has struggled over the years against Connecticut, you know, they can just keep running different fresh defenders at him to guard him. McNamara following the rebounding action against Syracuse. <laughs> Terrence Roberts called for his fourth foul by Mike Stevens and Jim Beheim didn't like that call. It's also a one and one on the seventh team foul against Syracuse. Nice use of the stagger. Then they came back with a double on the foul line for him, running some things to get the open looks for Jerry Mack. Well, that's a major concern for Syracuse with the lead dwindling, momentum on Connecticut side, and now four fouls on Roberts, who's been terrific today. Armstrong makes the first of the one and one. Seven out of eight from the line for 11 points. Devendorf back in for Syracuse. Josh Wright on the bench. It's a two point game. 11 to 3 run. Connecticut has not led in the game. Devendorf badgered by Williams. McNamara with Brown on him. Syracuse cannot try to hang on. They've got to continue to be aggressive. Nichols baseline jumper is short. Armstrong the rebound. Roberts 
Oh, why did you just let him go, Terrence? He just fouled out on that play. Oh my. Mike Stevens almost gave him a technical. I think Roberts was really upset about the fourth foul, the one a moment ago that Jim Beheim vehemently protested. That was away from the play. How's he going to get his arm out? Yeah, but then, he, but then he then he pulled down. That's what cost him. The ref was very patient. He was going to let it go, Mike Stevens. And Jim just doing the calming down process right now. He's he's had a great game, Sean. He has Solid contributions. But on his way off, he took his mouthpiece out and fired it toward the photographers in the baseline area. He wasn't throwing it at them. He just bounced it off the court. But the last thing you want on the way off is a technical. Mm -hmm. But now it's a major challenge for Syracuse to hang on without Roberts. He's been an enormous factor in the game. They'll have to play a very small lineup as McCroskey comes in for him. They replace 6-9 Roberts with 6-5. And that might be generous in McCroskey. And Armstrong back at the line. He's 8 out of 9. Their team is 18 for 21. Well, this kid's improved every year steadily. Solid play. Become a good shooter from that 15 in range. He's matured into one of the nation's best big men. Block shots, rebounds. He's a presence. First time the game's been tied since they threw the ball in the air to start it up. 13 to 3 run for UConn and a long five minutes to go for Syracuse playing shorthanded now without Roberts. Nichols short again with a three foul on Connecticut on the rebounding action. Just the 15 foul so not yet a bonus. It's the fourth. That's right Jim Calhoun on Denham Brown. They charge the Brown. And Rashad Anderson will come in for Brown over their careers. They've basically been Interchangeable parts. As a matter of fact, Jim Calhoun has said on a number of occasions, maybe they shouldn't have gone to the same school because, in many ways, they're much the same player. For Syracuse now, the satisfaction they can run that side pick and roll and get whatever they want. Uh, run it with Demetrius Nichols out here, and you mm -hmm. pick and pop, right? Nichols has missed a couple of open jumpers on recent trips. Watkins with the right-handed jump hook. Boone got knocked to the deck without a whistle. Now a scrum, a held ball, and it goes to Connecticut. Boy, that's a perfect shape up right under the rim. And uh, Jim knows he got what he wanted. This duck in Jay, I mean, you, you got to get rim on that, right? Well, he's trying so hard to loft the ball over an outstanding defender and shot blocker in Josh Boone. But when he extends, he's just not getting any touch on that ball. He's almost slinging it. Now a chance for the first lead of the day for the number one team in the country. Four and a half minutes to go. Syracuse and Connecticut tied at 65. They haven't shot well from the field, but they've scored 20 points at the free throw line. Anderson's three would not go. Foul the rebounding action. And I'm not sure it's on Boone, his first. And the team's sixth, so the next one will put Connecticut over the limit. If you're Syracuse now, especially without Roberts' momentum going against you, would you try to run some clock on virtually every possession uh, I, I, if you can? I think what Jay said earlier is true. I think they've got to attack. Run this stuff. Maybe take a little time, Sean, but play within the offense, though. You just don't want to give the players the feeling that they're trying to hang on. Right. You've got to aggressively try to go out and win this game. Nichols with Armstrong out on him. Tough fadeaway by Demetrius Nichols. He has 15. That's his first bucket of the second half. Well, that kid could be so good because he's got the deep shot and the ability to get a middle game going. Williams a tough skip to Rashad Anderson and now Gay, 17 to shoot. Boone, a little too hot to handle for Armstrong. Out of bounds, last touch by Syracuse. Connecticut ball after the media timeout. The Huskies will have 13 to put a shot up. 
Jim Calhoun knew it would be a tussle despite the two big wins over Syracuse in the regular season. The basket by Nichols, the difference at the moment. Welcome back to the Big East Championship presented by Aero Postal, the first of four quarterfinal games, another dandy here at Madison Square Garden. Syracuse has not trailed in the game. They led by 14. Now they're clinging to a two point lead with 325 to go. And Connecticut ball with 13 to shoot out of the timeout. Zone's got to pay attention now, try and make them use a little bit of clock. Marcus Williams. Oh, wow. Ooh, from out there, Jimmy. thought he got ball. Jim Burr said no. Ooh. Well, that's the one weapon that you got to contain. Don't let Williams get in the cracks, get in the lane, and a little bit disgusted, and rightfully so. Bevendorf with his second foul. Williams three out of four from the line today. Connecticut hasn't lost its first game at the Big East Tournament since 2001 when Syracuse sent them packing. They've been on a roll in this tournament. Won 18 of the last 22 games at the Big East Championship. They played in the title game seven times in the last 10 years. Trying to get there again. Tied up with just more than three minutes to go. Syracuse has answered just about every UConn challenge in this game. This will be the toughest one to answer right now because there is a lot of game pressure on the shoulders of the Orange. It was a big call a moment ago. Syracuse thought it had a steal and a chance for a four point lead. Instead, Connecticut tied it, but the response by Devendorf off the feed from McNamara. That shot by Anderson, a leaner on the baseline. Syracuse the ball the Pull two the point lead with 238 to go. Pull the string a little Sean. And what's the rush. McNamara with Devendorf Watkins Nichols and McCroskey we just tuned in Terrence Roberts fouled out. After one of his best performances of the year 10 to shoot. Five to shoot. McNamara short. And the rebound of the weak side down to Gay. Williams with Gay, Armstrong, Anderson, and Boone for Connecticut. Two minutes to go. Keep the middle, be alert, and UConn can exploit it as well. The tension palpable in this building as Williams ties the game again. Boy, nice shot with the screen there, huh? And he's been magnificent in the second half. Completely under control, Marcus Williams. I think so many great players on UConn. This kid sometimes falls between the cracks, Williams. He is outstanding. He has 17 points, 12 here in the second half. 69 all, a minute and a half to go. 20 to shoot for Syracuse. McNamara. Left alone, missed the layup. Perhaps surprised that he was left wide open. Unbelievable. You're caught there where you can't use the glass. A little ricochet. Another chance for the lead for the first time today for Connecticut. With one minute to go, Williams blocked by Devendorf. Devendorf ahead of the pack. Anderson racing back. Devendorf oh. the spinning score. How about that footwork? That was gorgeous. Sensational in the open floor. And boy, does that teach kids a lesson? Learn how to use the offhand. Terrence Roberts, an excited spectator. Eric Devendorf, the freshman from Bay City, Michigan. A huge play at each end. He deflected the shot and then ran out and scored with defenders coming hard. Boy, how about the outlet pass by Watkins, and that's a beautiful move. Reminds you a little bit of Kenny Smith when he was at North Carolina, used to make this move all the time. That's high praise, too. So solid, of course, the bench, led by Michael Hopkins there in the middle, Rob Murphy as well, and Jimmy lamenting. He probably felt Williams got hit at the other end on that great block by Devendorf. It looked clean. So each team with a timeout, a two-point lead for Syracuse. 
fifty one and a half to go thirty three on the shot clock so about eighteen seconds difference if you're Connecticut do you try to go quickly to increase the number of possessions. Well I think you take the first good opportunity you can get and rely upon your defense no question about it. And the big thing here is offensive rebounding. Uh, the ability to get a good shot where the bigs can dominate on the glass and keep Williams from turning the corner. Bear in mind, with the exception of McNamara and Devendorf, Syracuse a poor free throw shooting team, although Roberts, the worst, is on the bench. Gay missed a three. Look who got it. for the lead. Oh. Traveling the call off the rebound by McNamara, and he comes away a little gimpy. I think the contact caused him to walk. Good hustle by him, though. Get down, help the bigs. Jim Beheim hollering he thought there was a bump. And I think he feels they're poised to pull off an upset. Without getting much going from their favor that's a travel he just turned his ankle when he yeah. landed. Yeah exactly just a little brush not a foul. A little misfortune there good hustle though. Trying to walk it off now thirty nine point three to play and thirty five on the shot clock for Connecticut. They play it into Gay along the sideline. Now Williams. Devendorf shut him off. Anderson for the oh. lead. Dagger. He is amazing come crunch time. First lead of the day for Connecticut. Last time out used by Syracuse. 27 to go. The shot clock off. And what a big play gentlemen that McNamara could not land without traveling with that rebound it gave Connecticut another chance to take the lead and you give the best team in the country extra opportunities they will convert. Yeah, I think McNamara was saying to the officials that this guy's just incredible every big time jump shot for his four years he's been able to convert McNamara was talking to Ed Corbett saying he was looking for a timeout on that uh, stumble that he had. Oh, does he make some big shots, though, in his career, Rashad? Well, now that he's healthy, I really do think Rashad Anderson's starting to look like the Rashad Anderson we saw in the 2004 postseason. A uh, very steady play, second half by UConn. And now uh, the pick and roll, something they've used successfully, Syracuse. Also, the, the weave, the dribble handoff, slap back's been very effective. Or using the single double for McNamara on the baseline. Any of those things. Do you go quickly or oh, do you try to take it right down and take nah, your chances? First good yeah, opportunity. Yeah. I, I like to, you know, give yourself a chance because you can extend the game with a foul if you don't make it or whatever you may have to do. Syracuse already one dramatic win in this championship. It was yesterday against Cincinnati. Down by two. McNamara hit a three with .5 to go. And Andy Kennedy's club came up just short when Jihad Muhammad's half court heave at the front rim. Do yep. they have another hero in line today? Uh, you know, ideally, too, you want to dribble and get in the cracks, and that might give Watkins a chance on an offensive rebound if they can track it to the ball. Well, the guy I think you need to watch out for as well is Demetrius Nichols because he is long, athletic, can put it on the floor, and he can make a challenge shot. The inbounds to Josh Wright. With Devendorf, Watkins, and McNamara. Williams defending Devendorf. The freshman Devendorf back to right. 15 seconds to go. Right in close. It bounds off the Denim Brown is fouled by Wright with 11.2 to go. They got a good look at it. And Wright's shot hit a couple of rims and dribbled off. In fairness to Josh Wright, you know, he did in his mind the right thing, got a decent shot, but McNamara's got to get a touch to make the decision. There he is on the outside. Even if it took a few seconds more, wisely giving it up here. And you double clutch here a little bit. You've got all those shot blockers. That certainly had to be in the back of his mind. And now Denham Brown, a very good free throw shooter. At 84% for the year. Made the first of two. It is the double bonus. No timeouts for Syracuse. They're down by three now with 11.2 to go and Jim Calhoun uses the timeout. They do not have a foul to give. If they fouled it would be a one and one if it was not in the act of shooting. 
And we discussed with Jim Calhoun it's become the yeah. favorite topic of coaching strategy these days when you're ahead by three with the final seconds ticking down do you foul or do you take your chances that the other team will not make a three. He said less than five seconds he would. Correct mm -hmm. in that little get together we have with him. Well I think that's the conventional wisdom is if it's under five seconds you can give a foul when you're up three but the question is you know with 11 seconds and Syracuse bringing it the other way. I mean, you're going to have to make some decisions on the fly, and you're asking some big guys to perhaps make a decision. You don't want to let anybody get into their shooting motion. You have to give the foul the right way if you're going to do it. He may play smaller also, UConn, simply because of the three-guard look by uh, the Cues. McNamara would obviously be Jim Beheim's first choice, but Devendorf. And Nichols capable from three point range. Now they're going to pressure a little bit, at least with McNamara. The danger here is you turn it into a speed dribble. You can get up the court quickly and maybe get an open opportunity. Nichols inbounds to Devendorf, and now McNamara, 10 seconds to go. McNamara, a deep three! Oh, Five and a half, time for Connecticut. Williams, three seconds to go for the win. No, and we go to overtime. Jerry McNamara for the second day in a row from almost the same spot. This one deeper than yesterday's buzzer beater. Extends this game for at least five more minutes. Wow, McNamara's band. Oh, does this kid step up as well and mom and dad it's not over for this family excursion mom saying that came from my side of the family <laughs> look at this guy just the ability uh, you know it's funny Jay the speed dribble gives guys your back up defensively you're given ground it's a dangerous thing to do but this kid just provides the lift when necessary Williams with a pretty good attempt here too almost goes might I suggest that perhaps he's underrated? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to hear the press conference today. Look how deep that is. That's unbelievable. NBA nylon. Jerry Mack. Onions in Manhattan. Oop. My goodness. It's amazing. He the, had the puppy set too over the side, Josh. It's amazing about coaches too. You see Jim Beheim soon as he went in, he's, he's coaching the other end. Get oh, yeah. back, let's get ready. Too much time yeah. left. They yeah. had about five and a half seconds as they charged back up the court and had to dodge the attempt by Williams for the win at the buzzer. Well, Syracuse certainly, as we head into this overtime, even with the momentum of that shot, fellas, you'd have to think it's working against them. They had the huge lead, it slipped away. Connecticut's the deeper team. Syracuse playing without Roberts. Roberts, that's a big thing, I think. You're right. But the zone enables them to collectively rebound and also make tougher deep shots. And at the other end, uh, they're taking advantage of the size differential with their dribbling and exploiting the bigger defenders. Gay and Watkins to jump to begin the overtime. Gay with Armstrong and Boone. Brown and Williams, Watkins. With Nichols and McCroskey, Devendorf and McNamara. And Gay won the tip. UConn needs to look inside along that short corner. The bigs dive. There's a little screen. Screen and he went up the lane arm. What a great look here. Under Boone lost the handle then swatted from behind by Nichols. Brown rejected by Watkins and he's called for the foul. And that's the fourth on Daryl Watkins. So they've already lost one of their two big inside players to fouls, and now Watkins in jeopardy as well. Maybe as good in the country as interior passing these guys. Aren't they amazing? Great look by Armstrong. Unfortunately, Booth got tangled a little too deep. Ronald well, Brown, perfect from the line. Of course, it was big that he made both free throws in his last trip to the line in regulation because McNamara's three only tied the game, and Brown missed one. McNamara might have had a game winning three at the buzzer or near the buzzer for the second day in a row. The lead two for Connecticut. 
They trailed throughout regulation until the final minute. Went up by three, only to see Syracuse tie it on the McNamara. Shot in the final seconds. McNamara guarded by the much bigger Brown. Brown 6-6. Diefendorf oh. the score. How creative was that? Well, he is a shot maker. Gay drives by Nichols. Dumps it off for Boom. He's fouled. Boy, the dribble has been favored, Jay, by Syracuse. Great job taking advantage. A little screen on the handoff, the slap back. Yeah, just a handoff and screen. UConn's got to think about switching that. They have similar defenders that are involved in that action. A switch might cut off that middle. Boone gets the roll around the rim. Devendorf's foul his third. Second half team foul situations carry over, so remains a double bonus. And Syracuse over the 10. Friendly rim on both shots for Boone. They're 28 out of 31 from the line. That's been a major factor. And then getting back into the game. Syracuse 10 out of 14. McNamara off the mark. And it's controlled by Armstrong. Under four minutes to go in overtime. Largest lead for Connecticut was three. Of course, they only led in the final minute. And that was in the final seconds before the McNamara heroics. Williams a deep three off the mark. Long rebound, Devendorf. He had a chance for a moment to run with McNamara, but Connecticut got back oh. well in the pass, a tough one. Wound up with McCroskey. Watkins gets the bounce and the foul. Boy, fortuitous, would you say? A ricochet, not a good look by Devendorf. First of all, Watkins struggles catching, and yet it goes the right way, huh? There's that length again defensively. And be able to get a piece of it, a little slip pass, and two Beamons going at it. Well, fortunate to score off the broken play, but Jim Beheim wants his team to take it in transition if it's there. If it's not, bring it out. Make Connecticut guard shorten the game a bit. Swish from the 50% <laughs> free throw shooter. He's two for two from the line today. Syracuse by one. 3.15 to go in overtime. Well, Jim Calhoun said before the game, Syracuse over the last 15 years has become our biggest rival, and this is a game that will add to the legacy and tradition. Armstrong missed the dunk, held ball, Syracuse ball. Now, it's interesting. Devendorf again, the spin dribble, he got caught that time. Earlier, he did the same thing. They could have stolen. He's got to be careful. Well, he's got to just get possession and let the traffic right. go by him. When you try to just catch and dribble, that's when you get in trouble. They inbounded the ball, but Mike Stevens, the official in front of the Syracuse bench, said, wait a minute, Connecticut had six players on the floor. They were trying to substitute. Armstrong was going off, and he wasn't off. And Jim Beheim saying, too give, bad. Give me the technical. You guys gave him the ball. Let you administer the game. Well, that would add another controversial Ooh. chapter to the history of the Big East <laughs> Championship. We just had some memorable moments over the years. Pick and pop. McNamara into the lane again. The floater wouldn't go. Nichols the flush, and he missed it. Watkins the rebound. McNamara thought about an NBA three, and they'll bring it out to Devendorf. Two and a half to go in overtime. Syracuse by one. Jerry taking a little rest here. Loves to go left, doesn't he? Does, he? and well. That time he didn't get enough glass. Strong. Marcus Williams back the other way for Connecticut. Back and forth they go. UConn another chance to grab the lead. It's been a rare lead situation for them today. They look tired, both teams, right now. Yeah, they do. Well, Connecticut hasn't gone as deep in the bench as it usually does. Gay missed a three. Adrian, a tip. And then McCroskey fouled by Anderson. On the rebound action, and it is a one and one situation. And McCroskey, another weak free throw shooter, 47%. McNamara is 91% for the year. The rest of the team is at about 57% combined. McCroskey, 22 out of 47 for the year. His first trip today. 
And the front end of a big one and one with 150 to go. And you as an offensive player you have to know the shooting percentage. You want to anticipate maybe get a rebound or slap it back out. Will McCroskey did not get the bounce. The rebound by Gay. They're going to stay at home with Anderson on this wing. That should open up the backside. Williams back to Gay with Boone Armstrong and Anderson. They do run out to Anderson quickly. They run out to him again. He gets himself free for three. Rebound Armstrong stripped by McCroskey. He has the ball on the floor. Gets it to McNamara with numbers. Four on two and he elected to pull it out. Smart, smart really. Chance of a mishap. Nichols to the basket fouled. Really even four on two, Bill, you well, think smart to yank it out? When he spun him around here, he did the right thing. You know what I mean, Sean? Mm -hmm. They forced him to turn. Now all of a sudden, a lot of bad things could happen with the backflow of the defense. Armstrong has just fouled out, so he's the first Husky player disqualified on fouls. And when play resumes, Nichols will be at the line. He's 68%. For the season, two out of four from the line today. 14 points and 10 rebounds for Hilton Armstrong. Those become typical numbers for the senior this season. Well, Jay's our authority on backflow, as he said early in the year, the deflections. And this is what I thought. You were right. They had the numbers. They got the run out. And as they turn him up here, Sean, I think right there. Now, you, you follow what I'm saying? Yeah, but I don't know if McNamara fully realized that the numbers. The four on two okay, numbers. you might be right. But maybe. Maybe that would have been a decision anyway. He's right. very bright. He has a Syracuse education working in his favor. Well, well, he's also got a great feel. And he didn't feel that that was the right situation. And it certainly worked out getting to the free throw line. I'm sure he studied for his, by the way. <laughs> Nichols. This will be the last one and one. The next team foul will be the tenth of the second half in overtime for Connecticut. Every free throw huge now a three point lead for Syracuse 115 to go in overtime. Still Adam think Brown came in for Armstrong pardon me. Still think you go inside. Yep and there they got it if they want it to gay at Watkins too strong rebound in traffic. By Watkins he contested the shot and got the rebound and now Syracuse will look to run some clock they don't want to foul McNamara. Devendorf is 82% from the line as well. They do foul McNamara, the best free throw shooter in the history of the Big East. Well, the two guards shoot the ball well, Sean Devendorf and McNamara. What an intelligent play by Jerry McNamara. He ran over. As soon as he gave it to Devendorf, he ran over eyes wide and said, give it back to me. And Rashad Anderson just did him a huge favor by fouling him. Two for McNamara. It's a two possession game his parents Joyce and Jerry senior been at every game. Boy have they some, seen some highs and lows just in the last couple of weeks. He made them both Syracuse by five 48 <laughs> seconds to go. Now you have to guard that three point line. Seven unanswered points for the orange. Brown wants the three didn't get the three rebound gay off to Brown blocked by Watkins and it hit the end line. So Connecticut ball thirty five point two to go and thirty two on the shot clock. Well they got a great opportunity there. Give Watkins credit he's made some big plays on the defensive end of the last couple of sequences Connecticut 0 for 10 from the floor in overtime Brown wow. Three wow. In front of the bench. How about that. He had stretched the D. They could have made a dump inside as well. Big time delivery. Well, they are champions. Brown's been a national champion, a Big East champion. He and the uh, fellow seniors have been through all kinds of pressure situations. Of course, he was the hero on the last second shot in Maui to start their season. And was the MVP at the Maui Invitational with that shot over Gonzaga in the championship game. As they discuss strategy, let's send you quickly back to the studio on a big day in college basketball. Here's another update. Well, somebody's bubble just burst. The officials are over at the monitor making sure that Denim Brown shot was a three. The standby official Bob Donato there with Jim Burr. 
looked yep. like a three. Yeah, looked, looked good. Boy, no his question. strength, his strength just to get by that double team, extraordinary. Where well, they've earned their little envelope today, these guys. Good job, really, Jim Burr, Ed Corbett, Mike Stevens. And it's not like Syracuse didn't have a hand up either. Let me ask you this, fellas. Obviously, uh, Syracuse very much wants to win. I think that would, without question, cement their spot in the field. Should it not go their way? Have they done enough with this performance against the number one team in the country? No way of knowing for sure, but if you're the tournament committee, would this not make an impression? Well, you know, they don't evaluate how hard you play or how well you play. They evaluate on wins, but certainly against the number one, number two team in the country, as they played what, Villanova and Connecticut down the stretch, it's got to impress them. Well, they do They do evaluate quality losses, though, and quality oh, no, performances. No, I know quality, but I mean the win is the big thing. Though. Yeah, it's, it's the huge thing. There's no question that the, the great dividing line is winning and losing. But, but there's no question, in my judgment, that Syracuse will be among the 34 best teams after the automatic qualifiers are in, and that's the measure. It's not, did you win X amount of games? Did you win X amount of games versus top 50? It's the 34 best teams after the automatic qualifiers are in. And a little pressure now. You don't want McNamara to get the ball. They got Austri to deny him. And if you're Syracuse, you don't want Watkins and McCroskey to get the ball. You want Connecticut to have to foul one of the good free throw shooters out there. McCroskey throws it to Watkins. They should foul him. And they do at the last second. If that ball hit the net. It, it as it was coming in it could have hit the back of the backboard that's you've got to get wide away from the glass that was a real dangerous play boy Watkins the man they least wanted to catch it and he had time to get rid of it it seemed and held it long enough to give UConn a chance to foul with 26 seconds to go there are the season numbers but that includes McNamara's 91 percent Watkins two for two today he made one a moment ago as he said, started the day at 51%. This is a two-shot opportunity, and it rattles in. Good for this kid. I mean, this is a very tough position for anybody to be in, but particularly if you don't have the utmost confidence. 13 points for Daryl Watkins from across the river in Patterson, New Jersey. Big second free throw. He's perfect from the line today. That makes it a two-possession game again. Oh. Damon Dorf a steal, oh. and he missed the layup. That might have cemented it. Brown at the other end with a three. Unbelievable turn of events. They get the giveaway on McNamara. Oh. Boy, Beheim wanted Devendorf to pull that ball back out. And once he went all the way, the release was too harsh. You've got to slow down if you do take it. And I think Jim was right. Better served. To dribble right around to the other side. Boy, well, he made a great play to steal it, but then a little too excited as he went in to shoot perhaps the presence of Boone in his mind as well. But now McNamara with two huge free throws. And Denham Brown had just talked to Jerry. He was laughing prior to the free throw. A little up and chip on the line. Now this is just the appetizer in the quarterfinal round. The opening offering of four today. Most of the fans now around this venerable building on their feet. McNamara, rare miss. Now two to tie. Three for the lead. Perhaps the win for Connecticut. Williams goes quickly. A floater. Pops out. Rebound in the corner. Scrum. Held ball. Connecticut ball. 5.6 to go. Oh, squeeze it. That was such a big rebound. Offensive rebounding now becomes something to be concerned with. How much closer can you get to going in than Marcus Williams shot right there? And you think these kids don't want the ball? Oh boy, what effort. Boy, and Nichols and Devendorf had a chance at the possession, couldn't quite come up with it. No timeouts for Connecticut. Syracuse has one. Side inbounds. And Sean, the big thing, Williams might get a screen. Let's see if they pick him. Better hurry up. Yeah, he's diddling with the ball. This is a two for the tie. No, the tip, no! Syracuse wins! Wow!
not bad, Sean McDonough. Incredible performance. Great comeback by UConn. And the heart mustering up great energy for depleted Syracuse with Roberts out. And how about Watkins? Incredible with the two free throws. And right here, you can't get a better look. He splits with the curl. Dindorf doesn't close it. And how tantalizing is that? Syracuse with an amazing performance. A team that came to New York having lost three in a row. And one week ago today, they lost at DePaul by 39 points. A team that did not even qualify in the top 12 of the Big East to make it to this tournament. The McNamara celebrate. The party will go long into the night in Scranton, Pennsylvania. And on the hill, on the campus of Syracuse University, Jim Beheim just walked over there at a table with his arms outstretched as if to say, Are we in now? Julie Beheim thinks so, fighting back the tears after one of the biggest wins in recent history among many for Jim Beheim. He's with the underrated Jerry McNamara. <laughs> you know, Jim, I've been doing all my bracketology work, and I need to know from you how many more do you need to get in? <laughs> I'll tell you what. I I think if you can beat the number one team in the country, you should be in. But you know, we've had a great year. We really, this is amazing. I believe Connecticut's really, truly the best team. And for us to come out here, and we even made some bad mistakes at the end of the game and still win. But this guy right here besides me, he came down and went up for that three. I knew we were going overtime, but I didn't think we'd have enough left. I really didn't. We had our small guys out there. and. I mean, they just battled their butts off. I'm just more proud of this team than I think any team that I've ever coached because we lost three games in a row coming down here, and it would have been easy to not show up. These guys have been great, and it's all because of this kid here. He, he doesn't want to lose. You know, yesterday you passionately defended your player for some perceived shots. How are you feeling about the stance that you took yesterday in your press conference? I feel real good, except that my wife is mad and the chancellor's mad. I shouldn't have swore. That was a huge mistake on my part. But, you know, you get emotional when people get after your kids. And he's my kid, and I'm going to defend him. But I used a bad word. I think I learned it from you and, and Raftery, though. So I'm blaming you two guys. Well, from time to time, bad words are needed for emphasis. But congratulations. Let's get, let's get with Jerry real quick. Jerry, a tremendous performance by you coming into this game. How were you feeling physically? Did you think you and your team had enough gas in the tank to beat the number one team? Well, it was difficult, and I agree with Coach. I think they are the best team in the country, especially right now, and uh, we're, I, I'm proud of what we did. I, I, I didn't have much. Uh, I, I gave what I had, and in the first half, I had Coach taking me in and out so I could get a quick rest, and uh, I think it proved proved to be uh, helpful coming in the second half. At the end of regulation, any doubt that you were going to take the shot? Well, I wanted the first shot, and uh, I didn't get it. So when it came for the second shot, there was no doubt about it. And uh, same thing as yesterday. When it left the hand, it felt good. And, you know, I'm just thankful. I'm thankful that I went in, and, and you know, we're moving on. Well, I want to do a little thing with you to audition you right now for Sports Center. Syracuse, in or out? In, absolutely. I hope. It's not up to us, though. We're, we're hoping. Well, Jerry, congratulations. Thank Thanks a lot. Sean, back to you. Jerry McNamara, 17 points. 14 of them in the second half and overtime. 13 assists today on the heels of yesterday's heroics against Cincinnati. He did it again today. His team led for 39 minutes, but then fell behind against the number one team in the country. His three got them even again, forced the overtime. They were without Terrence Roberts, as Jim Beheim said, had to play small. Second day in a row they played while Connecticut was off, seemingly much working against them. And yet they persevered. You could hear the pride and the emotion in the voice of Jim Beheim as he talked about what has transpired here in New York on these two days. And they live to fight another day against either Marquette or Georgetown. Those two teams are on the court, warming up for the second game of the day in the very tough act to follow department. Final score in overtime Syracuse 86, Connecticut 84. The Orange. Without question now heading to the NCAA tournament one would surmise and for somebody else the bubble just burst. We'll be back in a few minutes with the second game of the day Marquette and Georgetown but now let's send you back to the studio to Carl and Doug.